Hello and welcome everybody to my talk. My name is Markus Lewa. I'm from Parkopedia and Parkopedia is the invisible part of a seamless digital fueling experience. And today I want to talk a little bit about in current cloud platform technologies as we see them as enabler for location based activations and payments for enabling a contact free multi fuel future forecourt. And many forecourts already entered the new era of multi fuel retail and just also begun their digital journey. And this is a new thing in the industry because for the last decades, fuel forecourts actually didn't have too much incentive um, to adopt new digital solutions, digital services as a fuel forecourt usually had a very resi resilient and special place in the market because a car needed fuel, a customer needed to go to the fuel forecourt, go to the point of sale, pay and leave. However, a couple of factors seem to change that and actually push fuel retailers towards the digital journey. One of them is, of course, the COVID-19 pandemic, which has forced fuel retailers to think about contactless payments, other contactless digital services and how to offer them to a driver. Uh, another driving force is the alternative fuel space. So the increase of EV drivers, um, also the upcoming hydrogen cars, so four cores need to rethink their strategy about new services like park and charge, like uh, services around hydrogen stations and still considering also the fuel station in itself. And last but not least, uh, the last factor is also increased customer expectations and customer demands change because they are used from other fields, retail fields, the ever increasing digitalization that they have services at uh, their fingertips digitally and can digitally interact with services. And so this demand or expectation also swaps over to other retail fields like the fuel forecourt. However, this digital journey is not only a risk in terms of investment and going forward, but um, thinking beyond plastic cards and stamps, it opens really up a plethora of new possibilities, for example, for customer loyalty programs, or even more importantly, and what I want to talk a little bit about today, new customer touch points directly in the car where it matters with the modern connected car, what they're enabling as of today. And digitalization has gone already some steps for many fuel retailers and the digitalization was tackled in different steps. So the first steps were usually digitalizing pumps, uh, digitalizing point of sale systems, digitalizing other parts of the forecourt, um, setting up, executing on digital loyalty programs, um, setting up data platforms for generating data driven insights to craft more personalized driver customer experiences, and also releasing, getting live new mobile apps for contactless payment, for example, or for managing the loyalty programs, the digital driver communities. However, I want to challenge that a little bit and make clear that also thinking beyond mobile apps can be actually really useful because we at Percopedia, we're absolutely convinced that the maximum convenience and really a really integrated digital experience can only be achieved in the, directly in the car. So we're convinced that a mobile app is not always the best solution because the vehicle is centric to those experiences. So you park a car, you charge a car, you fuel up a car. So why not bring the digital service to the car? And the time for bringing those services to the car are better than ever because we also see a huge shift in in-car technologies, cloud enablement. So a car is constantly online. Um, they enable direct interaction with the surrounding environment and also the vehicle centric services can be seamlessly integrated in the in-car experience and directly in the in vehicle infotainment system. And they are getting more and more sophisticated. So what I show here on the slide on the right, right are actually two current examples. The one on the top is from Mercedes, the so-called hyper screen, which enables also context based interaction, depending on the surrounding environment of the car. And below is the uh, I drive six from BMW, so also a sophisticated in vehicle um, infotainment system, which enables the customer to interact with different digital service offerings. 
Why am I saying this is, uh, and why is this so important? Because we think the car is central to those experiences, but it needs to be also seamlessly integrated. What do we mean by seamlessly integrate such things? What we have seen in the market from Parkopedia side is actually we have um, players who bring on app stores into the car. So you have an app store, which is more or less a copy of the mobile phone. So you have to open your app for digital fueling. You have your app open to your app for charging. You have to open your app for parking. And worst case, you have need to have a separate account for each of those single apps. And what we have seen, this is simply not working because it's too much friction. It's too much of a burden for the customer to actually use those apps efficiently. And we are a strong believer that a seamless integration into a map layer, for example, is the best way to go. Why is this important for a fuel retailer or a fuel forecourt, you might ask? The point is it allows a new customer touch point with context-based interactions. And what I mean by that, I want to quickly make uh, clear with a small example. So here you see a street map. It's an excerpt of London uh, just for showcasing that. So you have different POIs on the map, which are charging stations, fueling stations, fuel forecourts, uh, parking possibilities. And they should be relevant to the customer when they actually matter. And this is what we mean with context-based interaction. And I want to quickly highlight how it could look like with such a map integrated experience on the example of uh, charging a car. So assume you have a customer journey of a driver driving an EV car and his car notifies him, hey, your charging level just dropped below 20%. Um, I have found for you a forecourt who has the right charging station, the right plug for you. And if you go there, you also get a coffee for free while you wait for your charging session to end. So this is a customer journey which would look in the car very similar if it's integrated well. You have a map, you get prompted as a driver and you say, hey, do you want to look for the next charging station now? I have the recommendation here. This four court, 1.4 miles away, has the right charging station and the charging station is free and you also get a coffee while you're waiting for your charging station to happen. So the driver selects that, he drives to the four court, drives to the charging station, digitally in the car can directly authorize the charging station, gets out of the car, plugs his cable in, goes to the station, gets his free coffee, drinks a coffee, buys some stuff while he's going out back to the car, unplugs his cable, and the transaction is done digitally while he's driving away. This is a customer touch point, which is also of interest for the fuel uh, forecourt to get more customers, customer loyalty, drive customer loyalty, and provide state-of-the-art digital service to a customer. Of course, this is not an easy endeavor to do, and there is a new list of players, partnerships required. And first and foremost, of course, the importance is that the fuel forecourt enables this digital experiences, means enable digital payments of pumps, digital authorizations, authorizations of charging stations on the forecourt. Um, other digital service, digi digital buy of a washing ticket or whatever it might be. Often fuel forecourts, of course, have don't have the capability in-house themselves. So there are new players, IoT platforms, I call them here, um, helping enable fuel forecourts to open up these new channels to drivers, these new B2C uh, channels to actually address the drivers directly. And on the other lower end here, we have the car manufacturers. Car manufacturers, of course, they have a strong interest in those services because they want to offer their drivers the best in-car connected experience they can offer. From digital payments to digital services to finding the right fuel for court at the right point in time. However, a common manufacturer already uh, usually needs to make sure that this connected service is running where he sells his car. So this can easily span 40, 50 countries with a different vast amount of players, fuel retailers and so on. So the car manufacturer is usually relying on aggregators. And this is where Parkopedia, for example, is coming in um, to harmonize that offering and interact with all the different fuel for cars, the different IoT platforms in the market and provide a coherent offering to the car manufacturer, which they can provide to their drivers. So we have a, a new upcoming um, scenario with different players and partnerships to enable actually these seamless experiences. However, that also means we're looking beyond the very classic 
reselling commission-based business models and we see actually new emerging business models which uh, i term affiliate marketing loyalty models um, which means that based on the example i just gave with the driver who's looking for a judging station you have the option to generate more revenue by actually driving um, customers to your forecourt with specific loyalty offers, loyalty programs directly. For example, you offered it that coffee during the charging station or a car wash after the fifth uh, filling up of your car. And on the other side, it also offers the possibility to get actually a huge amount of anonymized uh, fleet, vehicle fleet data. It means, uh, for example, what is the average transaction volume, time for fueling, um needed what is the average time when they show up uh, in business traffic um, what is the average demography so it up, opens up a whole lot of new possibilities this digitalization in terms of differentiation uh, possibilities for a fuel forecourt so where is parkopedia coming in into this picture and as i mentioned before we're the hidden player enabling the seamless digital driver experiences. And so how are we doing that? And um, we are based on four pillars for that. The one is data, the second one is user management, and then of course, transactions, regardless of which nature, whether it's a digital pump or a charging station or something else. And accordingly, also the payments attached to it. Why data in the first place? The comprehensive location data is actually the only thing which allows drivers to find their relevant fueling or charging station or parking space when they actually matter to them. And this is usually always on the road already. So they need to find a fueling station when they're on the road because they recognize, ah, oh, my tank is, my gas level is running low. I need to find a fuel station now. And we're strong believers and our data enables that to integrate that fully into one map, map, map experience to enable context-based interactions for the driver. So to make it, make it really seem and frictionless. And below you see a little bit what data I'm talking about. Um, so we're talking about fuel and charging prices, fuel and charging types, what services, what kind of services does the station, the fuel forecourt offer? What is the, the brand? What are the accepted payments methods, etc. Then on top of that, our cloud-based platform actually handles everything from user management to the transaction management, like pump authorizations, charging station authorizations, and also the payment orchestration for the forecourt customers. What do I mean by payment orchestration? This is, we call that internally, that we make sure the payment uh, from the customer or the current driver is going to the right fuel forecourt at the shortest amount of time. And we have a successful payment digitally done on the back um, transparently for the customer. To enable that, we use actually um, what we call a seamless transaction technology. So single sign-on, a uh, customer only needs to sign up once uh, for our platform. And we do that in um, account management with all the Fuel for Court IoT platform partners. And with that enablement um, capability, we are at the moment the largest facilitator of such dig digital fueling payments in Europe. And we have built out strong partnerships already with our partners who are actually supporting and unlocking the digital fuel use cases. And I want to name here ThinksNet and also, Car also Carpedium. And with our partners, we're the largest in-car facilitator in Europe for actual fuel payments. And we're also looking into expanding coverage. Um, so currently we cover 3,500 fuel stations for this in-car experiences across six countries. And with our partners, we aim to rise that over 60,000 stations in 18 countries over the next three years. With that being said, why at all should that be interesting for the fuel for court uh, of the future, multi-fuel for court of the future? Um, we think that enabling really seamless integrations, frictionless integrations, and a plethora of compelling digital services in the car is one key factor for the forecourt of the future. And Juniper Research also says that fuel and electric vehicle charging will be a leading area for in-vehicle payments. So they even suggest that it might reach 77% of all in-vehicle payments will be attributed to those two in 2025. And this also swaps over to increasing payments in food and drinks, which also are of interest of the station owners or future fuel forecourt with a 
estimated amount of 11 billion dollars in 2025. So I invite you to come, come with us through, through this journey. I'm looking forward for the discussion. Thank you.